Hi, I'm John White. I'm going to talk to you about the changes that have taken place in the 4th of August version of Spooky 2. The focus has been on biofeedbacks and making them faster and more reliable. This has been done in two ways. The first way is the way that Spooky 2 recovers generators from errors. Previously, if a generator had faulted out, Spooky will reset the USB port with the hope to getting the generator to come back online again. This unfortunately had the effect of slowing down by feedbacks and interrupting the sensitive timing that's involved with the biofeedbacks. So now when Spooky 2 performs a biofeedback, the facility of resetting USB ports is turned off. If you want Spooky to never reset the USB port when an error occurs, you can also manually deselect this option here. The other way in which the Spooky 2 biofeedbacks have been improved is the facility of setting the biofeedback limits. You can set the allowable minimum beats per minute, the maximum beats per minute, and the maximum heart rate variability that's allowed during a biofeedback scan. We'll do this through an example. I've got currently a Edvon preset loader that's part of a quarter scan. It will scan from 76 kilohertz to 95 kilohertz and it's set to run for 16 minutes. Now it's running in test mode and so these generators are being emulated. They're not real world generators. And so now we're doing the countdown for generator number two. Once the countdown of 30 samples has taken place, the biofeedback will start. Now, in emulation mode, the pulse is quite high. It varies between 80 and 87 beats per minute. Now, I'll show you through example what the effects are of setting one of the changes in the biofeedback limits. Let's say I set the minimum at 80. This, uh, the changes that you make here are live. Now any um, beats per minute which are below 80 will not register as part of the feedback. Now the way that Spooky works, there's got to be three successive good samples before Spooky accepts the current sample. Okay, the, the biofeedback missed a beat there and another one there. And so it's slowed down because I've got the limit set to about here where anything above 80 is only registered. Now if I make it a little bit more aggressive, if I make the minimum beats per minute 85 perhaps, you'll see that the pulse has slowed right down or certainly the graph has slowed right down. That is because three consecutive pulse, pulses at a rate of 85 beats per minute or greater have to be registered before the graph moves on and before the frequency moves to the next frequency. You can see in the graph only the high beats are being registered here. So if you've got a naturally high heart rate, this wouldn't be a problem, but if you've got a slow heart rate, then you have. And so generally we set the minimum beats per minute to around 30 or 40, depending on how, or what resting rate you have your heartbeat at. Now, if your pulse generally varies between 60 beats per minute and 80 beats per minute, you'd want to set the variables, the minimum maybe 40 and the maximum 100, which is a 20 beats per minute above or below your true, your, your resting rate minimum or maximum. But you can go higher if you like. The risk you run, if you run too large a range, is little glitches in the signal which occur when you move will still be registered as a valid input. So just keep that in mind. If you do find you're getting a racing heartbeat, maybe it's running twice your true resting rate, then it could well be because either your clip on your finger or your ear hasn't been located correctly 
or you've moved. And because it's still within the limits which you've specified in the system tab, it registers as a valid input. Well, that's just in a nutshell, a bit of a large, larger nutshell than what I've anticipated, but this is uh, these are the changes which I've made in the biofeedback scans, all designed to make biofeedback scans uh, more usable and, and certainly more reliable. Um, there was one thing I would like to mention. Um, if you've got a naturally high heart rate variability, as many people do, uh, if they've got some sort of arrhythmia of their heart, you can set the HRV to a higher value. And so you can make it perhaps 40. And as long as your beats per minute is still within your normal kind of range which you'd expect, then it will still work fine. And so really we've broadened the base of the number of people that we that can perform biofeedback scans through the changes we've made in Spooky 2. Right, okay, thank you so much for watching this video. Goodbye.